Hello everybody, how you doing? This is Vicious. I hope you can say that you're doing well, and if not, at least by the end of this video, you can say you're well informed. So today it's going to be another technical tutorial. We'll try to keep it short and sweet. It's kind of part of a mini video series where we're going to be upgrading my home network to 10 gigabit. As part of that process, I need to test things. I need to test my current network speeds, and then I'm going to test it again afterwards and make sure everything's running the way it's supposed to. 10 gigabit networking often is going to be way faster than what you have now, but you want to make sure you have every bit of performance you're supposed to. So I've broken it out into logical chunks, and these videos are going over the testing procedures because these videos are useful for everybody, not just someone who's upgrading their network, but testing your network to make sure it's working great. Or if you're at work, you can use this stuff at work as well because I have definitely found problems and fixed them with these kind of tools. Last video, we did an iPerf3 tutorial. It was great. It's lightweight. It's on many different uh, operating systems. Today, we're going on a, over another program called Iometer. Now, this one has a graphic interface. Someone in the last video did comment that there's got to be a program that has a graphic interface. So this one does. However, we will still be touching a command line very briefly. So we'll get to that in a moment. Now, Iometer is very well known for being a disk testing tool. It was released by Intel many, many years ago as a free tool for professionals to test their SANs and storage systems. It, however, it has a hidden feature. It's not really hidden. It's like right in plain sight. It says network right there, but it's not usually used. If you Google tutorials on Iometer, you're going to find disk testing tutorials. So today we're going to use the secret other half of Iometer, which is the network testing. Now, we are going to first start with the instructions of how to download this. It's www.iometer.org, and you can go to the download section, and you'll find the pre-compiled binaries. Unlike iPerf3, not as many choices here as far as operating systems. You're pretty much Windows and Linux. So grab the newest 1.1.0 of your Windows or Linux pre-built binary and download it. So we'll get the x86, x64 binary. That's going to come on down as a zip file. And once we extract that zip file, we're going to have two EXEs, Dynamo EXE and IOMeter or Iometer EXE. And I will say IOMeter at least one more time because that's how it looks when I see it. And IO is a very common term. So IOMeter and Iometer being one and the same looks like this when you open it. So this is actually your graphic interface. It's doing all of the work of calling Dynamo EXE behind the scenes, which is the actual working application here and it's command driven. When you first open it up, we'll close it and actually reopen it. This is what you're gonna see. You're gonna see your managers, which is gonna be your host machine that you just ran the executable on. And if you drop it down, you have all these worker threads. Now these are disk worker threads. As you can see, we have our disk targets here, and they're responsible for creating disk files and data and the communication, the transmission, the testing of testing your disk. Today, we're not working with disks, so we're going to actually get rid of them. So click on your first worker and look up here, and you'll, you'll find the button for disconnecting them. And just click away until all of those are gone. What we actually want to do now is create a network worker. However, first things first, this is a client-server testing relationship, just like iPerf3. This is going to be our server, so we need to go set up the client. So we need another machine on the network where we're going to test the network throughput from. I have a remote machine. This is a virtual machine. And I've already downloaded Iometer as well over here. And I've extracted it. And we have our same two binaries. So we're not going to run Iometer here. We're not going to run the graphic interface. As a client, this is the one and only time we have to touch the command line, we're going to run Dynamo EXE. And we only need two little tiny pieces of information. What is the server? And the flag for that is dash I. And my server is at this IP address. And where am I coming from? In that case, that's a client. And we're going to put the IP address of this computer that we're remoted into. You can use host names if you have DNS resolution. But IP addresses just keep it a little bit more simple. Hit enter, permission to run, and it's going to kick things off. So we can see we're connected. We can see what port we connected at. That's down in here somewhere, right here, port 52478. If we minimize that remote connection and go back and look, you'll see that we have a new manager popped up in here. And it came in with the same defaults. We have these threads for the disk workers. We'll disconnect those. So now 
we have two managers, no workers. Let's click on my PC and we're going to click on the start a new network worker. So it creates a worker for me and we need to configure it. So I have all the IP addresses that I have associated with my PC and all the IP addresses associated with that remote PC. Uh, since the, the worker is sourced here, it's asking me what interface do I want to use for that connection. The, uh, the one at default selected is the proper one for my setup here. And then what IP address do I want to connect to on the other side? So we'll just check that box. And that's it. You'll see that immediately created basically a worker on the other side for you just by checking that box. At this point, we kind of carry through with testing just like you do for the disk test. There's no new kind of testing available. It's the same testing that we had before with the uh, different access specifications, but there's only really one that you'll probably want to use for the network test. We're going to go to the 4K aligned, 100% a read, and we'll move that over. Let me go ahead and edit this and show you what it looks like. So we have 100% reads which means there's no writing here. We have 100% of the access being given. There's 100%, actually we wanna change it. I put random, we want sequential. So here we go, sequential 100%. And um, this pretty much is the best case scenario for absolute maximum throughput, which is what we wanna test when it comes to network testing. We'll go next to the results display. We wanna make a change here as well. Total IOPS is fine. Uh, total megabytes per second, we want to change. Go to megabytes per second and make that read megabytes per second. Remember, this is a read on one side and a write on another side. You have to not look at the total because if you're t looking at the total, you're adding the two together and you're going to get double the number that you actually expect. So we'll say reads per second. Everything else is good. And uh, test setup. Let's change this to every. One second, let's change test setup. Uh, I'm going to go with a 15 second test and a five second ramp up. I'll leave everything else at the default and we're ready to click on our start test. So let's click it. it we'll ask you to save a CSV file. This is great for saving those results for later. If you want to check again or save your baselines, you know, this is a good option. We don't have to save it, so we can just hit cancel and it will start our testing. So to do that ramp up time, and then it's gonna start actually throwing that data across the wire. All right, results are in. As you can see, we have a average end result of 106 megabytes per second. Now, if you did watch the iPerf3 video, you remember that we had 840 to 860 megabits per second of throughput on the iPerf3 test. These numbers are not lower because it reported in megabytes per second. So we have to convert that. Uh, really easy to do that. There's eight bits and one byte. So if we have megabytes, we just have to multiply it by eight to get the result. So let's go ahead and 106 times eight, about 848 megabits per second was reported with this test. So as you can see, it is right in line with the iPerf3 results. This is exactly what we were hoping to see. This gives us a second test to verify the network results were what we expected. And now you guys know how to use Iometer to test your network throughput. So I hope you found the video useful in some way or another. If you have any questions, feel free to ask those down below in the comment section. I'll be happy to answer those for you. And I hope everyone looks forward to the next videos that we're going to come out with. So that once again, this was Vicious, and I'll see you next time.